The President, please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Audience est ouverte. I now hand over to the Et prosecutor and the lead co-lawyer for the civil party. Donc uh, this is the uh, last session for the two parties to put the question to the witness before us. You may proceed. Mr. Kim, when your last um, statement to us was in relation to your wife. She worked close to the centre. Well, she was not involved with any agents. She worked close to the centre, and I encouraged her to be strong, as we were known by a lot of people, and she could never be killed. Can you help us, please, as to when you were having these sorts of conversations with your wife? Pourriez-vous nous dire quand vous avez pu avoir ces conversations avec votre femme? I would like to uh, correct it a bit. Réponse. My wife uh, Je tiens à apporter une correction. was not working in the center. Mon épouse ne travaillait but, pas But uh, following the uh, war period, she uh, did not work directly in the center. Après but I, what I described earlier was that uh, certain individuals en fait, whom the ministry remove in order that uh, they be sent to do the farm work. Then I became uh, terrified and I had to discuss it on a constantly basis with my wife about that uh, issue. Peur, so we normally discuss at night because Nous during the day times we all had to work. Soir, journée, Can you help me please? What part Question. of the country was your wife originally from? Votre épouse venait de quelle région du pays à l'origine? Réponse. Her hometown was not uh, clear, and the, her death of birth was unclear as well. She was the daughter from a civil servant family, and she changed uh, her uh, places several times, and her father used to work with the Ministry of Public Works. So she changed uh, the workplace from one place to another from Kampung Thom to Krati province. But as for my father-in-law's hometown was in Phnom Phum Trum, Suntuk district, Kampung Thom province. And as for my mother-in-law, she was born in Prek Praang village. My mother is born in the village of Prek Priam. Prek Ba commune, Stung Trang district, Kampung Cham province. But before the coup d'etat, uh, she was coup attached to work in Grati province. And that's why my wife uh, was also educated in uh, Grati province, in the downtown area of Grati province. Mr. Kimborn, you said in your OCIJ statements that um, other people disappeared around the same time of your wife, and you named Pong, Kot, and Choi. Is that correct? Votre épouse, et vous avez mentionné Pong, Kat, et Choi. That's correct. Yes, that is correct. Oui. Brother Choi uh, was uh, transferred out, but I did not Frère know uh, where he was sent to. Je ne pas où on In respect of Cot, immediately prior to Cot's disappearance, Cot, what position did he hold? Juste avant sa disparition, quelles étaient ses fonctions? Cot meant he was in the. Uh, management team. He was the uh, chair, the director Cot of the department of 
propaganda. And uh, before that, he worked in the uh, newspaper section, but later on he was designated by the minister uh, to involve in the management team in the Ministry of uh, Propaganda, headed by uh, Brother Choi, uh, and Kot was the deputy leader in that uh, department, but the technical aspect of the work in that department was to read um, a radio news article. Ce service devait you also added in your statement about leaders from the propaganda Question office um, disappearing, also Hu Nim and Tiv Ol. Is that correct? Actually, I learned from my friends uh, that my, our former boss, namely Hu Nam and uh, Tiu Ol, during the five-year time uh, period in the, in the war, uh, they were the uh, former minister of propaganda. In your earlier interviews in respect of Khoi Tuan, you said you knew that he was arrested Quote, because I read a revolutionary flag magazine and all the pages in the magazine were Khoi Tuan's confession. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You may not be able to answer this, but can you help us into in, uh, what year that revolutionary flag magazine was that you were reading. Um, I do not recall it very well, but uh, I can remember most of the story about Koi Tun because most of the pages de in the um, magazine was the uh, confession by Koi Tun. But as for the specific um, time or, or date, I do not recall. Thank you. In respect of uh, the makeup of the Ministry of Propaganda, Concernant l'organisation du uh, and education de la after Hunemut disappeared, is it right that Yunyat then became responsible for both ministries? Yunyat a ensuite pris la responsabilité des deux ministères. Yes, that is correct. Réponse, oui. You also stated in your Question. previous interviews that there was a time when Nguyen Chea was in charge of the propaganda office. Is that correct? À un moment donné, Nguyen Chea était responsable du bureau de la propagande. Est-ce correct? Response. As a matter of fact, the leadership role was not his task. But when John Yat en was fait, not present, he was there parler, to involve directly in administering the day-to-day -day work. Uh, le you said in respect of the period after your Question. wife arrested that you were sent for political study sessions for half a month. Épouse, and when you were asked what was the content uh, of the political study session, you said this. To refashion ourselves and build the country, and uh, talked about the issue of embedded enemies that required us to be alert. Is that correct? Et de parler des ennemis imbriqués qui nécessitaient de la vigilance. Est-ce exact? Response: Yes, it is. Réponse: Oui. Dealing with what was happening in your life after this. Is it correct that Question. at one stage Par you were transferred to work as the chairman of the Kampuchea Krom radio program? Response. Yes, it is correct. Oui. When you were the chairman of that program, were you working in one of the ministries in Phnom Penh or elsewhere? Response. Yes, it is.
response. I worked all along réponse. in the propaganda ministry. Pendant tout ce temps, j'ai travaillé au ministère de la propagande. The difference is that I worked in different sections of the ministry. Simplement, j'ai travaillé dans des services différents de ces ministères. Mr. Kim Vaughan, when you were asked in your earlier interviews, um, E3-381, Khmer 00357205, French 00402997, and English 00365528, you were asked about what the broadcasts were about when you were the chairman at Campuchia Crom. And amongst the items you said, um, talking, in fact, about another station or a program, you said this. There was also a program in the Vietnamese language run by Palm from North Vietnam that broadcasted confessions of Vietnamese prisoners of war. Is that correct? That's exact. Response. Um, the interpreter could not uh, hear the witness testimony because the mic was pas not activated enough la réponse, for car us to le hear. Micro pas été assez Mr. Kim Vaughan, can you remember the name or specify which program it was that was broadcasting confessions of Vietnamese prisoners of war? Diffuser les aveux de prisonniers de guerre vietnamiens. Response. Réponse. So far as I remember, it was the uh, uncontested uh, evidence concerning the Yuan enemies. Preuve inébranlable, inébranlable. Euh, uh, and which radio program or which Question. broadcast was it uh, that gave radio? this information about the confessions, please? Diffuser ces informations, ces aveux. Réponse. Response. In the confessions, uh, we captured uh, the live interview or confession of the soldiers. Nous diffusions les aveux. Now, just concentrating on your role as the chairman of Campuchia Crom Radio. Uh, who was involved in the selection of material to be broadcast? Response. We received from two sources. First, from the border. Secondly, we had to write in accordance with the information emanating from the confessions of the Vietnamese prisoner of war, because the Vietnamese prisoner of war and the Khmer Crown people shared the same territory, so part of their confessions were relevant. Uh, because we did not understand Vietnamese, we had to seek assistance from the Vietnamese or Khmer Kram to assist us with the knowledge of the geographical feature of the area. At that time, we could only go all the way to Phnom Dan location in Takeo. And uh, because we traveled to those locations, we could uh, understand the geographical location. However, to obtain the actual information concerning Mais that area, we had to contact uh, the Khmer Crown people. 
bien connaître les détails et nous vivons uh, en contact indeed, avec les Khmer Rouge. There was a chaotic situation in the south Vietnam uh, area, Vietnam area. Vietnam Sud était chaotique. Thank you. Now just concentrating Merci. solely on your radio program. Si pouvait... So Campuchia Crom. Si vous pouviez concentrer votre radio. Sur la Worst station de radio, ever la vôtre, celle de Kampuchea Krom. Y a-t-il eu jamais diffusion de discours? Response. Réponse. No, they weren't in non. my program. Pardon, We only radio. broadcast uh, the texts written by us. Nous ne faisons que diffuser des textes que nous voice of the Khmer Crown. Et les voix étaient celles des Khmer Krom. Mr. Kimball, I want to go back to your wife, please, if I may. In your OCIJ statement, you said this. I'm not sure if she's still alive, but I haven't heard from her. Is that correct? That's exact. Response. Yes, it is. Oui. Have you remained in that state of uncertainty since 1977? Cette incertitude demeure-t-elle depuis 1977? Response. Réponse. Yes, I have. Oui. I haven't received any information Je about her. Je n'ai reçu aucun renseignement à son sujet. So that I'm clear, since 1977, has anybody in authority ever shown you any document to help you to know for sure what happened to her? Response. No, I'm afraid not. No, jamais. I have never received any information other than information I obtained through the study session in which I was told that uh, my wife belonged to a CIA agent network. Mr. Kimbon, if such documents existed, s'il existait. Would you like to be able to read them with your own eyes so that you could put your mind at rest? President, I may. Mr. Carnavas. Mr. President, please intervene. The President, uh, Council, you may now proceed. Le président, allez-y, maître. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I understand the thrust Merci. of the question, but bon, I believe it's a gratuitous one. It's one that it doesn't uh, merit uh, je pense que gratuit. one to be asked, let alone et, et an answer. Thank rien you. Poser une telle question et la réponse est tout aussi inutile. Mr. President, that doesn't sound like a legal objection. Ça ne semble pas être une objection sur un fondement juridique. I, I uh, apply, please to show a document to Mr. Kimball.
The President, uh, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, could you please identify the document number you would like to put question to the witness? And on which subject matter would you feel that the document is relevant? Your Honor, the document number is E3-342, the revised S21 prisoner list. To answer your President, Mr. Honor, uh, uh, Mr. President, about relevance, Mr. Kimvun has spoken about the uh, disappearance of his wife. He does not know what happened uh, to her, even on the basis of his existing testimony. It gives a uh, reasonable cause to believe that she may in some uh, respect be a victim in this case. And it's for those reasons and out of the sense of humanity that I ask to put this document de décence que je pose la question et que j'entends je lui montrer le document. The President, le le uh, International Co-Counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chia, you may proceed to first. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. President. I think we left the realm of uh, legal objections um, in this case when the prosecutor asked the witness whether he would like to see this document. And I would submit that if we are talking about a sense of humanity, I think it would be the humane thing to do to provide uh, this witness with the opportunity, with the possibility to look at this document in private, not in this court. If the document exists, the parties can take notice of it, but I don't think it is humane to expose the witness to such a document in the courtroom. If, indeed, the prosecution is concerned about the well-being of this witness, let this document be shown to him in the privacy of his own surroundings. That is our non-legal but humane submission. Voici donc notre propre appel à la décence. Oui, Monsieur le Président, yes, uh, j'interviens brièvement pour uh, supporter entièrement short, uh, ce que vient de dire mon confrère. Je pense que uh, c'est vrai said. que uh, le témoin, s'il y a des documents qui sont relatifs à sa famille, a le droit d'en prendre connaissance. Et je pense que, humainement parlant, il est encore, ce n'est pas une objection légale. Je, je, une juridique, euh, je le souligne. Je pense que c'est vrai que le lieu de la salle d'audience ne me semble pas le lieu approprié pour un, que le témoin puisse prendre connaissance de documents qui pourraient lui donner des informations sur la disparition de sa famille. Le mal est déjà fait, mais je pense encore une fois que ça fait partie aussi Maybe the harm has already been done, de but uh, I believe de that it is the court's que duty to ensure that all dignité, people are avec, treated with dignity uh, le, le à, à, and à, à leur vie privée, the right to respect their privacy. The President, uh, Council Carnavas, you may now proceed. Just very briefly, that was the purpose of my objection, en effet, Mr. President. Mon objection. A sense of humanity. Un peu de Mr. President, I echo everything that uh, all three um, Defence Councils. The President, uh, Mr. Co Prosecutor, could you please hold down legal lawyer for the civil parties? You may proceed first. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. La partie yes, civile partage l'avis de la défense sur ce, cette question. Je crois qu'il est important pour les parties issue. que cette, cette pièce soit that, uh, mentionnée au débat, mais je pense que si le témoin doit en prendre connaissance, il doit en prendre connaissance en privé, pas Mr. Kim Vaughan sees the document if he wants to. I'm in your hands, Mr. President, as to how that's done. C'est que le document, que, que le témoin prenne connaissance du document. Je laisse à la chambre le soin de décider où et quand.
Bah. Le président. Le président. In respect of the request for filing of document or putting the document before the chamber sur le sujet du and it is challenged by several parties the proceeding qui est contesté par euh, plusieurs parties it is appropriate pursuant to the humanity and the uh, the privacy of the souci de person concerned de la this should de la have been privée. done through the vessel unit Ceci so dû être fait par the chamber therefore does not la chambre wish a document to be presented to contre the witness le fait de if Mr. Le co-prosecutor wishes to put a few more si questions then you may poser. proceed but at the Mais same si. time could uh, the co-prosecution advise the chamber as to how you already manage uh, your time among the civil party co-lawyers because we have only 40 minutes left civil, for your time minutes. to put questions to the witness all together with the civil parties. Mr. President, thank you for that clarification. I have no further questions and can I please pass over to the lead civil lawyers? Thank you. The President, thank you very much. Uh, legal lawyers for the civil party or civil party lawyers, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like, just like to remark that I will try to go through my questions before lunch break. Uh, I might need another 15 minutes after lunch break, um, if, if I may proceed after lunch break for 15 minutes with my questions. The President, uh, indeed you may proceed and the Chamber will assess uh, your request uh, whether it warrants additional 15 minutes as requested. Uh, the Chamber will ensure that uh, the proceedings will be uh, conducted uh, on a timely basis and uh, we will see to it uh, when you uh, are putting the questions, uh, but uh, the Chamber wishes to make it clear that the Chamber wants to ensure that the proceedings are properly conducted on a timely manner. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, everyone in and around the courtroom. My name is Bei Ye. I'm an international civil party lawyer. Um, Mr. Kim Won. First, I would like to talk a bit about the time when you arrived in Phnom Penh. You said yesterday that you entered Phnom Penh around the 20th of April 1975. My question is, when you entered Phnom Penh, what was the situation in the city? What did you see and hear? Response. In Phnom Penh, after the 17th of April 1975, liberation, there was avril, very few people avril, left in the city. The city was reduced to only a group of some Pompen. people, including the soldiers. It was not as crowded as it used to be in the previous the time. The President, the president. Uh, Council for the Civil Party could you please be advised uh, to slow down in putting questions to the witness for good record and for your message to be fully rendered into the language intended? Yes, Mr. Burden, I will slow down. So did you see any people leaving Phnom Penh? Any civilians? Response. I did not see people being evacuated because they had already been evacuated before I moved in. 
So when you said you saw soldiers, what were the soldiers doing? Response. The soldiers were the front soldiers. They were assigned or based uh, at their respective location. When you said you arrived on the 20th of April, did you travel with the mobile station, radio station from Stontang? Le 20 avril, êtes-vous venu avec la station de radio mobile en provenance de Stontang? Response. Factually, the Phnom Penh front mobile radio station left Lui, for Phnom Penh first, uh, and I had to come later with a truck carrying printing qui, materials, uh, and we had to pass Chamka uh, on Dong and Chamka Le before we reached Phnom Penh. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I will move on Question. to the next topic. You said that between 1975 until the end of the democratic Cambodia regime, you worked as a writer for the news and later on as the chairman of the Cambodia Grand Radio Show. I want to talk about the time when you were working as a writer for the news. When did you start working as a writer at the Ministry of Education and Propaganda? Response. Indeed, I worked as a writer en effet travaillé comme rédacteur. during the f uh, during the front regime. I was assigned to the printing house. Sous le régime tasks. du front. And I worked je with à la Mr. Hunem and Dew All in my capacity as a writer. I, I sometimes wrote uh, some texts for them. So these two prépare, individuals gave training to me all along. But uh, my core task was not ma tâche writing. Pas la Only after we entered Phnom Penh, after the photographers group were set up, then Mrs. John Yat assigned me with the task of writing. That's the main task that I started on in 1975 as a writer. Thank you. So did you start right Question. after the liberation Avez to become a writer a at the new, for the news or long time after the liberation? Était-ce peu après la libération ou longtemps après la libération que vous êtes devenu rédacteur de nouvelles? Response. Réponse. I had been working all along since uh, I was under the supervision of Minister Hu Nam. At the printing house, I could assist uh, the printing matters and writing short stories and poems. And I could uh, perform several other artistic tasks as well, apart from the printing house tasks. For example, I could assist in the stage performance and also singing because we lacked forces and we had to mutually help one another. I helped them with the stage performance and arts and they helped me with the printing house, so on and so forth. In 1971, I was not yet uh, uh, 
a real writer because I had to practice writing on a piece on a on pieces of paper where we could make several copies when writing on that first page. And uh, as the minister of propaganda needed assistance, uh, he would uh, use me. And by that, I learned on the job. And I also uh, dealt with party relevant documents. I was asked to help edit the text, for example, chopping out a part of the unwanted text. Uh, the text so that uh, it could be exemple, used uh, for the front news. That's part of my job uh, from then. Servir, uh, du front. I just want to clarify first, I want to talk Question. about the time after the liberation, after the 17th of April 1975. And as I understand, at that time, at some point, you were appointed to become Et a writer uh, for the newspaper. And I just wanted to know, was it shortly after the liberation, on 17th of April, or was it a long time after the 17th of April, 1975? Actually, as what I said earlier, First, I let a group of photographers, we learned début, how to take photos for photo. Donc on a à, uh, newspaper. Des pour, uh, les we had to master the skill to take photographs because um, those who were in charge of uh, camcording includes uh, the photos for the newspaper, photos for magazines, and photos for... The newspapers and uh, for movies. And I started to learn about how to uh, write uh, articles, but I was not quite conversant with it because I... Um, only knew how to take a photograph, but later on I learned to write newspaper articles, but it was not um, important articles, it was only announcements or so. So you said you were only writing announcements? Question. Did you ever write uh, anything about the evacuation? From Phnom Penh? At that time, Réponse. the topic on the Phnom Penh evacuation époque, uh, did not exist. Uh, the main topics Phnom Penh over there that we covered was the um, national reconstruction efforts and national defense, de we uh, try to write in order to encourage people uh, to um, build irrigation, uh, try to um, grow crops, and do agricultural works. So we did not cover the story of Evacuation. We were not uh, supposed to write about that because the information concerning the mov that movement, population movement, was um, restricted uh, by others. We could not write freely. We had to follow the policy line of the party. If you say you were restricted, who restricted you in what you should write uh, about and what not? Contrôlées. Qui vous contrôlez uh, en termes de ce que vous étiez autorisé à écrire uh, et non? I refer to the period Réponse. when uh, Hunem, uh, Tiu Ol and Yun Jat, all of them were the leaders who uh, gave the advice. And my direct supervisor also received advice from those uh, seniors people, and he handed down that order to us. 
de ses supérieurs qui nous relayaient. When you say that Question. certain information should not be published in a newspaper, Vous avez dit que who were ne the pas recipients être of this presse. newspaper? À qui était destiné uh, ce journal? À quel public? Um, to my understanding. Réponse. The information was circulated to all bases across the country. There were couriers, and then they prepared them in stack of newspapers. We uh, printed in, mm, in many, many copies, and they uh, transported in trucks and circulated across the country. Les dans les camions et Were les they also distributed to civilians? Étaient ces journaux euh, remis également aux civils? Tam. I ask other people, normally after printing the newspaper, we always uh, had the follow-up uh, record uh, as to whether or not those uh, newspapers were uh, distributed to the bases and the people. But uh, in terms of whether or not uh, it reached uh, civilians, I uh, did not know for sure. As I said earlier, in certain places, uh, people could uh, cultivate rice and with good uh, yield, but uh, yet they did not have uh, enough food uh, to eat. And the same is true for the uh, equipment we see after the war. There were many uh, items in the warehouse, but uh, they were not uh, used to provide to the people. So coming back to the issue of newspaper, it could have reached the people, but I did not know for sure because I uh, know that transport was not that easy at that time, so sometimes they could uh, deliver uh, them to the civilians. Uh, in certain areas, the newspaper, the content of the newspaper were widely disseminated. So at that time, there was the uh, possibility to reach the civilians or in certain places, there it was not possible. Donc, and à endroits, il était possible at that time, I encounter uh, a different situation of life. For example, in Phnom Penh, people had something to eat, Les but in the countryside, they did not have anything to eat. So the same is true for newspapers. Certain uh, uh, areas received the copies of the newspaper, but in other areas, no, they didn't. Um, you said that in the countryside, some areas did not have enough food. Did you report on this in, in your news? Were you allowed to report on this? Étiez-vous autorisé à en parler dans votre journal? I said earlier, uh, when I found anything irregular, I would uh, report it to the minister. But uh, the minister uh, advised me, as I uh, said earlier in my testimony, that uh, the minister warned me that I had to mind my own business. So I uh, did not actually um, disseminate such information to others. Thank you. Can you tell us the difference Question. between the newspaper that you worked on and the revolutionary flag or the revolutionary youth magazine?
Actually, the revolutionary flag was the internal party document. Even I myself did not read every copy of the uh, magazine. Normally, it was printed and disseminated to the party members, and it was meant actually for the cadres at the upper uh, authority. I was one of the cadres, but I was not a member of the party. I had uh, time uh, to read uh, the various issues of the magazines because I was attached to the broadcast uh, department. And as for the news that we published, as a matter of fact, it was a simplified form of information. It was not something secret. But as for the revolutionary flag, the message in which were meant for the uh, leaders. As for the newspapers and the pictures magazines, are uh, for the uh, public interest. We receive information from the public and we uh, disseminate or distribute to the public. And uh, that is also true for newspaper. As for the revolutionary flag, it, we did not receive information from the mass. Uh, instead, we receive information from the leaders, particularly the directions from the uh, leaders, and that was meant to uh, train cadres in the lower rank. You said yesterday that you had sometimes to read the revolutionary flag to write your articles for the newspaper. What kind of articles did you write based on the revolutionary flag? Afin de rédiger vos articles pour le journal, quels sont les articles que vous avez rédigés sur la base de votre lecture de l'étendard révolutionnaire? Normally, it was the um, instructive article involving the uh, national construction affairs and the national defense. Then we can depict a uh, portion of uh, that uh, article from the magazine. Now, for example, if uh, we were to touch upon agricultural affairs or work, we had to expand on it. For example, the uh, construction of the reconstruction of the country and the national defense uh, by way of great leap forward. Uh, we had to expand on that. And in addition, uh, there was an objective to achieve a Three, three metric tons of rice yield per hectare. Then we had to expand to that, for example, in order to ensure that people had surplus of production uh, for export. Uh, then we had to uh, expand on this uh, topic. So we had to depict on that particular topic and expand on them for the interest of the public. Is it fair to say that the newspaper was a method to convey orders that were published in the revolutionary flag to the mass? Yes, that is correct. Now, you said that Question. as a reporter, um, you went often to the field or to the provinces to take photos and to cover the news. My question is, which areas did you go to at that time? Donc à cette époque, vous vous rendiez dans quelle région? To my recollection, we went to all sectors and zones in cooperation with the, uh, those sectors and zones in order to report on certain areas. For example, we went along with them and asked them for uh, permission whether or not we could access certain place. And without their authorization, uh, we uh, had no access to it at all because there were certain areas which was um, not uh, secured for us. So uh, normally they would warn us in advance uh, if uh, we were to uh, cover any story from any particular areas. 
And how often did you go to the provinces? Question. Avec quelle, à quelle fréquence vous êtes-vous rendu dans les provinces? As a matter of fact, I went there rather often. I stayed there for some time for two days, for three days, five days, or even a week, or even for four nights. And could you choose where to go and when to go, or did someone tell you where to go and when to go? Choisir le moment de ces déplacements et votre destination, ou est-ce que quelqu'un vous disait où il fallait aller et à quel moment? If we targeted any area, we had to make a request directly to the minister because the ministers would um, request to the upper authority to issue the laissez-passer or the uh, the travel permit uh, for us. When you say you targeted a certain area, how did you decide which areas you wanted to target? Our target at the time, as I said, uh, there were certain uh, topics which were of interest. Uh, to us, nous and nous if we went there to see it firsthand in the field, we could cover uh, everything with every uh, detail, and we learned uh, about everything, and we took photographs uh, of the place as well, so that our information on the newspaper was informative. So if we went there, uh, we would have a lot of ideas to write it. And if we um, got the information but we did not have any idea, then the ministry would send us back there again. Now, for example, if uh, they could, farmers could not uh, produce a good production, uh, then uh, we had to uh, cover that story. Then, for example, if they encounter uh, difficulties, if students studying in uh, Phnom Penh who had difficulty uh, growing growing crops or so, then uh, we had to cover that uh, story as well. We stay along with those uh, people in order to establish relationship with them and get the information uh, from them. They wanted us to work as closely as possible to the um, poor people, poor peasant uh, on the ground. Otherwise, we would not understand their real life uh, difficulties. So we were supposed to be there with them and uh, learn firsthand of their hardship they uh, had to endure at that time. And that was the basis for our news report, or sometimes we could also produce it into short story as well. So if you live with them closely, with the peasants and on the, in the countryside, can you describe their living and working conditions at that time? That is correct. And can you describe oui, je suis en how de they faire. lived and how they worked? Pouvez-vous donc nous décrire comment ces gens vivaient et comment travaillaient-ils? As a matter of fact, any where we wanted to go, we had to seek prior permission uh, from our superior. We could not go there at our own will. For example, we had an idea to write about certain topic. We had our own objective that was to cover the story about that topic, and we had to only mind our business with the confine of our responsibility. I understand that you had orders to only cover certain topics. 
But when you went to the provinces, what did you see? How were the working and living conditions of the people? What did you see with your own eyes? The places where I went, normally we were well received, and I did not witness any food shortage or starvation or hardship. Also, actually, the places where I went at the time, I did not really see any miserable life condition over there. And I only noticed that people were very active in their agricultural work or other work, for example, if they were uh, tasked uh, to dig canals or build dam across Tina tribury. When the work site was opened, the Ministry of Propaganda and Education was also invited uh, to attend the opening ceremony of the work site, and we took photographs uh, of the site, and we also filmed them in order to uh, promote the movement. And we went to different other places. We also uh, notice uh, those movements, the movement of um, uh, making reservoirs and stocking waters or so. So normally we went uh, there uh, together the at Ministry of Education and Propaganda, and sometimes only one of uh, one representative from one ministry went there. But we normally went there in a truck, in one truck together. But in terms of the miserable life condition, we did not witness that. We did not uh, witness people starving. So we only went to the places where people had uh, uh, sufficient food to eat. And if we look at the physical build of the people, uh, they were physically Fit. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that people didn't have enough food in the countryside and that you were not allowed to report on this in the news. Now, you're saying that you only went to places where you never saw starvation and where people always had food. You also mentioned a few minutes ago that you lived with the peasant to see the hardship that they endured. Can you please clarify? I would like to clarify two aspects. The first aspect on starvation. Actually, back then, sometimes the target we wanted to cover was the places where people suffer from starvation. Particularly, we went to Sector 25. I started my first work uh, with Sector uh, 25 in Ang Kothom. In that uh, sector, um, there were new people coming from Phnom Penh, and I saw that uh, there were a lot of people. It was crowded over there. And they uh, at red corn, and that that is that was the place where I uh, witnessed the starvation. But in other times, uh, uh, the, our leaders only brought us to the place where people had enough food uh, to eat. Uh, so we had nothing to cover about the miser miserable life condition uh, over there because they would not uh, bring us to any place that people were suffering from starvation. The same was true in Phnom Penh. When we cover stories in Phnom Penh, people had sufficient food to eat. There was nothing about food shortage over there. Actually, uh, at that time, they at in the communal hall at that time, uh, particularly in my uh, unit uh, in Ministry of Propaganda, we always uh, had enough food to eat. 
And in terms of fish, when people in Phnom Penh left the city, then the fish that they caught uh, from Trang Chom Re were a lot. We had uh, sufficient food and fish uh, to eat. So I know that there were numerous documents about starvation, about hardship, mistreatment of people. But when I covered the news uh, in that period, I never witnessed that myself. And the, um, the situations that I uh, consider it uh, the hardship and starvation of the people was the first time when I was brought to one place, as I mentioned earlier, that people had nothing to eat but red corn. Thank you. You mentioned that new people arrived in Sector 25. Can you explain the term new people? I, uh, news people are the people who were evacuated uh, from Phnom Penh. Uh, there were a lot, a lot of them. In that sector, uh, it received a lot of people from Phnom Penh because it was close to Phnom Penh. And among all of us, there were people who actually went to that sector as well. There were many people, that's what I noticed then. And did you see, did you see how they accommodated so many people from Phnom Penh? Avez-vous eu l'occasion d'observer comment euh, ils ont pu accueillir autant de personnes euh, venant de la capitale? Generally, uh, that was understandable. If there, it was crowded, the condition was like refugees as well. And at that time, there was no presence of the UN. So the situation was, was as it was at that time. And the 17th of April, uh, it was uh, after the Khmer New Year, and we are approaching the uh, rainy season. So we had to live collectively, and we had to make use of certain public uh, places, for example, pagodas and houses that were abandoned. Then we had to live collectively, and I did not know how the local authority in that particular place uh, organized the people. Uh, and of course, they had to receive a lot of uh, people and following the war times they had nothing uh, much uh, to eat that could be uh, understandable and even in Phnom Penh after the war uh, we were lack of even salt uh, to eat so we could imagine the um, food uh, condition in, in the place at the time. Thank you. Now, I would like to come back to the term new people. Did you ever write anything about new people in your articles? As a matter of our publication policies, uh, there was no distinction whatsoever between the old and new people. And in the article, we were restricted from uh, making that distinct distinction. And that was mentioned in the revolutionary flag, but in, in our ordinary publications, uh, we were not allowed to uh, make uh, this distinct, uh, distinct distinction. And we were, we also copy per portion of it for a radio broadcast. So we only extract uh, ex a certain portion that does not affect uh, the uh, policy and party line. And uh, we have uh, constantly received advice from our superior that uh, broadcasting was like carrying a, 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 an, an artillery. Uh, it had enormous impact. So before any article was broadcast, uh, it had to be reviewed time and again. Uh, we cannot uh, decide to broadcast it at our own prerogative. We had to go through um, review, particularly the review of its content. And the editor-in-chief uh, had to revise uh, every content in order to ensure that it had less impacts. Pour en limiter l'impact.
Thank you. You said that the revolutionary flag mentioned the term new people. Can you tell me what it said about new people? Pouvez-vous me dire ce qui était écrit, ce qui était écrit dans les standards révolutionnaires concernant le peuple nouveau? I do not recall this particular issue. I did not actually see it by my own eyes, but I only wanted to refer to the authority. Of course, our newspaper uh, did not have the authority to write about anything that is secretive. Uh, it, but in the uh, revolutionary flag, they could write something that is secretive by the party. But for us, we uh, normally run story of general sense, of general topics. All right. I, you said that you are taking photographs in the countryside when you were covering the news. What kind of photos would you take at that time? Response. The main photographs we took were for the purpose of the magazines and we took still pictures for the newspaper and also we took uh, some video footages for the movie. We took photograph of the important events. We never talked about traffic accident like the news coverage of these days Cambodia. At that time, our leaders would ask us to write articles about building the country, articles that convince people to be educated on these purposes. And did the same restrictions apply to taking the photos as they applied to writing articles? Response. We had to be vigilant, uh, and there was restriction in taking photographs because uh, we had to cover the same confined topics. And uh, as a photographer, we had uh, been trained to uh, the technicality of taking photographs and also the political aspects of taking the photographs. For example, for each photograph, what kind of elements could a photographer take into account before uh, taking the shots? Whether the photo had uh, contributed to the reconstruction of the country or not after it being taken. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I conclude my uh, questions here. I would like to thank you very much for answering all my questions, and I wish you a safe journey back home. The President, uh, thank you, Council, and thank you, Mr. Witness. It is now appropriate moment for the lunch adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn for lunch until 1.30 p.m. When the next session resumes, uh, we will continue hearing the testimony of the witness, and Nous court officer is now instructed to assist the witness during the break. Counsel for Mr. Noon Chia, you may la now proceed Nguyen as you are on your feet. Thank you, Mr. President. Our uh, client would like to follow this afternoon's proceedings from his holding cell, as he is suffering from a headache, back pain, and a general lack of concentration, and we have prepared the waiver. The President, 
The chamber notes the request by la Mr. Nunchir through his council, in which he has requested that he be allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell for the entire remainder of the day. Due to his health concern that he could not remain seated le reste de la journée. Et in the courtroom. Des problèmes de santé, il ne peut the request by Mr. Nunchir has la been substantiated and therefore granted by the chamber. Mr. Nunchir is now demande. allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell through the video link for the entire remainder of the de day. Mr. Nunchir has precisely to this effect expressed his Well, were of his right to participate directly in the courtroom. The chamber asked their counsel submit the waiver signed or given sampled by Mr. Nunchi to the chamber immediately, and AV booth officers are now instructed to ensure that the AV equipment is connected to the holding cell so that Mr. Nuntier can observe the proceedings from there. Security personnel are now instructed to bring Mr. Nuntier and kill some pawn to their respective holding cell and have Mr. Kill some pawn return to the courtroom when the next session resumes. The court is adjourned. L'audience est suspendue.